Hello, Steven here, and welcome back to Batch and Hi-Fi. Well, in today's video, I'm going to cover a little bit more information on the Jolt Transform processor for Batch and Hi-Fi. Uh, had some questions asked about it uh, recently, and I thought I'd go over a couple more examples on how I use this processor, uh, some examples of different things I've done with the processor that might be helpful to you, try to figure out how you can use it for your data, uh, and stuff like that. So. The number one source I use when I'm trying to figure out how if I can use the Jolt Transform on my JSON data is normally the JSON Transform demo. <clears throat> and I'll add the link to the comments down below. Now from here, I normally go through this, do a lot of reading on the information here on how this example is being applied. And then I try to figure out, well, can I apply this to my JSON data that I have. Uh, it normally takes a lot of experimentation because this example is written for doing this example and not for taking the data I have and applying it to my data in the way that I'm trying to get the result. Uh, so examples are tough sometimes because they don't always cover all the cases, right? But they do give a nice little starting point to figure things out. And down here at the bottom, you can see original examples. So there's a whole bunch of different shift examples here that you can click on and see, you can transform it to see what the results are. And then examples of modifying as well. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back over to NiFi. We had a Jolt processor here that we can use for our examples. Go into it. We're not gonna change anything. We're just gonna go straight to events. And from here, we need some JSON data to work with. So I've collected some uh, mock data that we can use. Doesn't really mean anything, but it's about what it gives us to play with, really. So if we look at the JSON here, uh, we have at the top of the tree at the root, we have test results. And underneath that, we have results, test ID, request time, stamp, and then the access point results. And we can see there, it dives into underneath that. We have uh, results again, for the access point results, apparently. And then we have a list, an array of devices. <clears throat> so we can see we have a result type for that device, the ID, the model, IP, a couple other things. And then inside of there, so we have one array that's multiple devices. And if we go to the list here, we can see ID number two, and go all the way down the bottom real quick, to ID number five. So five devices in this array. And we come back up here, and inside of every device, there's also an array of antennas. And we can see there's channel zero, two, or one, two, three, four, and five, with some signal levels as the values that are down below inside of it. So we have a channel, and then we have a signal level. And we have that for every device. So let's go ahead and mess with this data a little bit. Well, the simplest thing to do with a Jolt Transform really is to just start at the root and then pull out things right below the root before you get into the more complex things, dealing with complex nesting and stuff like that. So that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing we need is to set up a spec here to get started with, uh, or open, whoops, open close bracket, and then open and close curly bracket. And then from here, we can go ahead and get started, set up the operation. And this is going to be a shift. And then the spec. And open the curly, make sure we have the close. Now to fix it later. Okay. So inside this spec, let's go ahead and keep this one simple. In this spec, all I want to do is get the result, the test ID, the timestamp, and the, yeah, the timestamp, those three values out of there. Uh, or those three key values, right, from the test result. So in order to do that, we have to first go inside of test result. And then we don't, we just open it up because we're going to go down into that next level of the tree. And then from here, we go ahead and grab result. And we just say we want to know the key and then the value of result. Oops. That's totally not what I wanted to do there. Let me fix this real quick. 
Go back in there, events, we didn't save it. So let me go ahead and grab a helper. All right, so same thing we were doing, we just did. We have the test result, the test ID, we and then we added the result timestamp and then the result itself. So this should give us the top level of that tree. We need to put our JSON back in here because we did leave. So let me grab that, there we go. So now we can go ahead and make sure it's formatted, I like to keep it clean, transform it, and you can see right here, the output of the JSON is exactly what we're looking for. So we have the test ID, result timestamp, and a result. Uh, so this could, in some cases, this may be all you're looking for out of your JSON. Uh, like in this one where we did a call, uh, some type of API call was maybe made, we got the results back, and basically the overall test is a pass and we have the timestamp for it in the test ID that we ran, right? So we could log this and this could be a ongoing log, a set of log data. Maybe we're safe, maybe we're indexing it into an index for Elasticsearch or something like that, but we're just trying to keep, make sure things are passing and stuff like that. I don't know, but that's one example of how we could use the data and how we can use a simple Jolt transform. And from here though, we can actually do a couple more things. So what I'd really like to do is get a little deeper inside of here and get down to this device data uh, into this first complex array, right? So from here though, we can see that, well, that's underneath access points results. And then from there, we do have a result and then we have devices, which is the next array. All right, so we need to add a couple things in order to get into that. First of all, it's still inside this part of the tree. So, you know what, we can do some copy and pasting, it'll save us some time. Let's go ahead and grab this part right here. And we're not going to paste it again, because we're going down to the next level. So we want to go underneath that part and get to the next area. I don't care about the results for this, because the overall test result in this case is a pass. So I don't really care about the individual access point result one because they feel a little redundant from the way I'm looking at this data. But what I do care about is the devices themselves. Now let's go ahead and grab that next level. Well, actually, so yeah, we want to grab devices. We'll go ahead and do that. And we actually wanted to grab devices. It's going to be an array in the curly brackets right here. So from here, We can go ahead and, and actually, I'm doing that backwards. This is going to be like this. We want test results. And if I remember correctly, we want to do devices. Uh, okay, now we want to loop through the array and grab the results for every single device in the array, right? Not just the one, so, or not just show a list of them. And in this case, it's going to be star and then open close 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 I'll figure it out in a minute uh, this is complaining because it needs a comma right here and that's complaining I don't have enough closing curly braces there we go now we're good it's formatted so it cleans up a little bit all right and now we need to tell well what do we want to grab so let's just grab the first thing in our list here. Let's grab the result type. And it looks like we got no error, so let's try this, and there we go. So now we can see we just grabbed the top three that we had before, and then we added a new one, which is result type, which is the result type, in this case, for all the devices. So we have five devices, we have five result types that are still part of an array in our comma separate. So we have the warning, pass, 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 pass. Uh, maybe we want to grab ID as well. And we forgot to have that comma there. Go ahead and grab the next one. Get the model. Leave IP alone. Lost connections, I do want to have that one. 
And then we're going to work with resets as well. And then up time, I don't really care too much. I mean, it's nice information, but in this case, we're not going to use it here. All right, so that's what we're going to keep. Let me get rid of that extra comma there. Looks like we're okay. Transform it, and there we go. So you can see we have result type, ID, model, loss connection, and results. Some people may think, well, I don't, I don't really need this, but there are cases where I've had uh, instances where I store um, some data in a comp in a can catalyst inside of a field in a table. Uh, I'll take one field and have a uh, comma separated list in there. So like inside of result type, this would be my field and my table. And then I might have the warning pass, 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 pass in there. Just all common separated, concatted inside that field. Uh, depends on what I want to do. And really when I do, uh, sometimes when I do stuff like that, it's like, eh, I'm not going to really work with it or I'm just trying to save some space or something like that. Just depends on what I want to do with it. But here we go. So we were able to strip out. And the way it worked is under devices, we basically use a star to tell it, hey, work through everything in the list and give me everything that comes back. What's really cool about this is if my device list gets longer or shorter, well, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to tell it uh, that this is, it's not structured data in the way I'm saying, hey, there's always going to be five results that come back, five devices all the time. I get to have 100 devices in one pool and two devices in the next pool. And then this will just work and it will give me those results back. So it's really helpful for uh, unstructured data that comes back to you and you don't know whether or not you'll get, like in this case, ID, right? I don't know if I'll get five devices all the time or if I'll get more or less. So it's really helpful for dealing with that type of data. Yeah, I find it, I find it very helpful, at least for when I'm dealing with it. Another cool thing about it that I do like as well is when dealing with APIs, uh, sometimes <laughs> it's not uncommon, for an API that you're pulling data from to get changed, and then the data that you're getting back over here for your input out of the or for your result out of the API to all of a sudden have an extra key value in here, or they take away a key value. Well, cool thing is if the key value doesn't exist in here, like let's see if we can just fake one. I think we can let's say not a Oh, yeah. All right, so now I can hit transform here and you can see it didn't do anything, but it doesn't throw an error either. So it's not giving me invalid or anything like that. So the good news is I don't, we, as we already see, right? The first thing we saw here is we're not including every value in our spec that's in the input. So we only need to put what we want in to get our output. The other cool thing is if I have, if I'm pulling from, if I'm picking something out of here that doesn't exist in one of my pulls uh, and it comes back without, I say, maybe I have resets this time, but maybe it's possible that when I pull from that API next time, if a device had zero resets, it's possible that it may not give me a null value there, but it may not just list resets at all. And I've had, so the best case is it's really helpful and it's easy to work with when an API or something like that changes on you. You don't know that a change was made, but it won't break your data flow down the road because it's just going to ignore it. And with the rest of, with the rest of the way the data flow works for Apache NiFi, it's really helpful for attributes and stuff like that where the data can change and NiFi based off how it works it won't break your entire data flow. Depends on how you're using it. All right, so let's do something a little bit more complex now. And some stuff that might be helpful here is, well, we have antennas. And inside of antennas, we have channels and then signal values, or signal levels in this case. And I probably want that data. So let's go ahead and get down to that one. So in order to do that one, we need to Go ahead and extend what we're already doing here. So underneath resets, we're going to continue. And then in this case, we're going to add antennas. And then we'll do what we did before. 
And then from here, under antennas, we want to go ahead and do the star so we can loop through. And in this case, I don't really care about channels. I just want to know the values here. I want to get the values for signal level. So that's what I'm going to go for. So signal level. And I think we have no errors. Go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Looks like we're okay. Push that, and there we go. So here's a really cool example, too, of some stuff I like to see. That's, that's really helpful for me in some of the use cases that I have. So in this case, we have antennas. Underneath antennas, we have five antennas. So channels zero through one, that's what they're called here. And they each one have a signal level value. Now, what's happening over here, if the way we put this in, is it's telling, we're telling it to loop through every single one and get us the result. So it's going down this list and grabbing all those results. Cool thing is it's putting them into an array over here. Well, depending on what you want the result to be. But this is adding them all to an array. So you can see every single value is here. So the last one is 6, 8. Come all the way down here to the bottom. Negative 6, 8 is there. So this one, what this is doing is it's building a new array for signal level for antenna signal level for all the devices. So not only did it loop through this signal level group, but then it went to the next device and it grabbed all those. This one grabbed all these and all these and then so forth. So that's what it just did here. Uh, now, this could be good or bad depending on what your results you're trying to get to is, but I've had, I have a really cool use case where for me, this works out really well where I'm actually pulling sensor level data and I need to know there's multiple channels on a device on that sensor and on that sensor, since it's all, it's one physical sensor in one location, I want to know the signal levels for all the channels on that sensor and get say an average or a min or a max on that. So this works really great because maybe I have newer sensors or older sensors and those some of those sensors have less antennas on them and some of them have more antennas on them. Well, what's cool about this is this ignore by it going through every antenna for every device here, if the model numbers were different, it wouldn't care about not having the same amount. It basically takes care of the problem where I have more or less antennas per model, uh, depending on the model number of the device. And it just puts them all on the list and then I can start working with them. So I know what all the signal levels is. So maybe I get a new device uh, tomorrow and I want to add it to this, this uh, network and add, add it as a new AP. And maybe it has twice as many antennas. Well, it would just automatically add those extra antennas for that new model into this list. So it can be really helpful depending on what you're trying to do. All right, so let's look at the next thing we can do here. But actually, you know what? Let's save it. This video is going a little long. I don't want to go too long. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and cover uh, a couple other things, uh, a couple other examples I have on how I use the Jolt Transform and what I do with it, or just the examples on how I've used it in the past or for current uh, use cases that I have right now. And we'll see what else we can do with this and how we can pull some of this out and do some math on it as well. So I'll catch you in the next video. Have a good time.